Hi folks, so let's talk a little bit about the influence vector now. So in terms of understanding what this limit of the de Groot process looks like, uh, what are people's beliefs converging to? So how can we uh, use this de Groot model to understand the limit of the learning process? And uh, let me just sort of uh, reiterate what, what we looked at before when we looked at um, you know, t to the t uh, raised times b. Um, when we're looking at the limit of this, we're looking for some vector um, S1 through Sn, which when multiplied by B1 through Bn, gave us back the uh, beliefs in terms of what the limiting beliefs are. And so um, this is essentially giving us a, a measure of the influence of each individual, um, how influential they are. And let's talk a little bit about that. So we're trying to find out who has influence in this model. Um, and you know, this gave us some preview of this by telling us what this, this S1 through Sn was a, a unit left-hand side eigenvector of the matrix. And uh, so that tells us what we get to when we get convergence and we get consensus. It looks like a, a normalized left-hand side unit eigenvector. Um, and that gives us the weighted sum of the original beliefs to figure out what the limit is. So when we look at this, um, you know, let's just take a peek at the, one of the matrices we looked at before where person 1 weights 2 and 3, three uh, 2 weights 1, and 3 weights 2. And as you begin raising that to different powers, eventually we see after five periods that it's all non-negative. Um, that's with the aperiodicity that makes sure that this thing turns out to be primitive. We get all non-negative entries eventually. And indeed, as you go to the limit, we end up with these calculations of uh, two-fifths, two-fifths, one-fifth as the entries in every row. And so that tells us if we're trying to hit this with some beliefs, B1, B2, B3, how much are we weighting person one belief? Well, two-fifths they're going to get weighted. How much are we weighting to person two beliefs? Two-fifths one-fifth on person threes, so that tells us those relative weights. And you can double check that this is a unit eigenvector of this thing. So if you multiply two-fifths, two-fifths, uh, one-fifth times this, what do you get back? Well, one-fifth, one times two-fifths, two-fifths, right? So hit this times this. So if we multiply this thing times um, two-fifths, two-fifths, one-fifth, we get two-fifths in the first entry, a half a two-fifth, and uh, one times a one-fifth, is a two-fifths, and a half of a two-fifths is a one-fifth. So indeed, we get back the same vector we started with. Okay, so when we look at, you know, in, in general, the nice thing about this is it tells us what these entries are going to be in the limit, which wouldn't be very easy to figure out just by looking directly at the matrix, uh, right? So if we look at this matrix and ask what the limit's going to be, or we look at this figure, once we've got some fairly complicated things going on, especially for a large matrix, it's not going to be easy to figure out what these eventual entries are going to be. And so the fact that it's a left-hand unit eigenvector means you could just plug this into your favorite uh, program, MATLAB, Mathematica, Maple, whatever you like to, to use to do analysis of, of matrices, and that would give you back um, a left-hand side uh, unit eigenvector, and then that calculation will allow you to figure out um, what the eventual influence would be. And, you know, you could also just raise this to multiple powers and, and see where, where it's going in terms of a limit. Um, so in terms of, of what's going on in terms of these limiting beliefs, the influence um, it, you know, is coming from the fact that these rows have to converge to the same thing for each row. And uh, in, in terms of what it eventually means, given that we know that this is going to converge to 3 11s, 4 11s, 4 11s, it tells us that the limit, you know, in terms of the weight it puts on whatever person one believes, is 311. So if person one had a weight of, uh, you know, belief of one and everybody else believed zero, we'd go to 311s. If it was person two that had that belief, it would go to 411s, and, uh, and person three would give 411. So it's telling us basically how much eventual weight in the final uh, belief of society did each person's initial belief have, right? So it's a very compact and simple measure. Now, w when we're looking at what this influence measure is, the nice thing and the way that we get to the fact that it has to be a unit eigenvector comes from the fact that we know whatever we want in terms of uh, figuring this out, it has to be the same thing since it's a limit. 
uh, of, of doing all this updating, it would have to be the same thing as if we did it after an, uh, one more, you know, if we did one more updating, it shouldn't change the limit. And so it has to be that S is equal to ST, and that tells us that effectively whatever this influence vector is that we're trying to get to tell us what the eventual beliefs are um, is going to have to be a left-hand side unit eigenvector. Now, the nice thing about that is it ties us back to these influence measures, the centrality measures, eigenvector centrality. It's saying that the influence that person I has is a weighted sum of the people who listen to I, TJI, times SJ, right? So, so um, the fact that S is equal to S times T tells us that effectively the way that you get influence is being listened to by influential people. That means your belief is going to get into their beliefs, which is going to get into other people's beliefs. And the more influence they have, the more structure they have on the final. So you get uh, high uh, influence by being connected to by high influence, uh, high influence individuals. And so again, that relates back to things like power measures, um, Google PageRank, uh, um, eigenvector centrality, and this is now giving us a foundation for why we would want to be looking at an eigenvector as a measure of uh, power or influence. It comes out directly in this model, so it gives us a nice uh, um, foundation for that. So the next thing we'll do is, is take a look at putting these to practice. Um, so we'll take some of the, the DeGroot model, look at the left-hand side unit eigenvector now of a, of a stochasticized matrix, and then see what that tells us. Can it help us understand um, what's going on in a particular network setting?